Hi everyone. I'm really glad that you're able to join me this evening for our Bible lesson. Um, I've really missed getting to see you guys at church uh, and really hoping that we're going to be able to, to get together at church uh, in the near future. But for now, these next couple of Sunday nights, we're going to be uh, having Bible lessons and we're going to be specifically looking at one character uh, who I think you probably have heard about before and, and you probably have find uh, this character very interesting uh, like I do. And the character we're going to be studying tonight and the next couple of Sunday nights after this is the character Gideon. All right, and Gideon was a judge of Israel. All right, and, and what we're going to do uh, these next couple of Sunday nights, or at least the format that we're going to uh, be doing, is we're going to be looking at three things in specific. Okay, each week we're going to do a review. So we're going to look uh, back at what we learned about uh, the last Sunday night. Now, of course, this is our first lesson, so we're not going to have a review tonight. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to learn a new story about Gideon or whatever Bible character we're going to be studying. And the third thing we're going to do is we're going to think. We're going to think about what does this mean uh, or what does this teach us about God? And what does this teach us about our relationship to God? So we're going to review, we're going to think, and we're going to learn. Okay, that's how we're going to kind of format these nights. So as I said, this is our first night. So we're not going to review a review. So we're going to move right into our uh, learning a new story about Gideon. All right, and we're going to start with Gideon's story right in the beginning. Okay, we're going to look right where the Bible starts talking about Gideon, and specifically the book of the Bible that Gideon's story is found within is the book of Judges. So I would invite you to, to turn in your Bibles or grab your Bible if you don't have it and turn with me to the book of Judges. Okay, and Judges is the seventh book in your Bible. So for those that know their books of the Bible, maybe you can say them along with me up to the book of Judges. We have Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, and then seventh, Judges. So that's where Gideon's uh, story is found within, and specifically it's Judges chapter 6. So you can turn there with me, and we're going to be looking at a few verses in our uh, Bibles in the book of Judges as we look at Gideon's story. But as we do this, I want you to think about what I said about Gideon. I said Gideon was a judge of Israel. And you might think, what is a judge? Okay, when I ask you what is a judge, I bet what comes to mind is what we think of it as a judge today. And I actually have a picture. This is probably what comes to your mind uh, first when I say Gideon was a judge. Okay, something like this. A man or a woman in a robe who is in a courtroom and judges uh, cases. That's not a biblical judge. And that's not who Gideon was. A biblical judge, or, or what Gideon was when he was a judge, is it meant that he was a military leader. It means he was the commander of an army. He would lead a whole army, hundreds of thousands of men, into battle, into war, against enemies. Okay, and interestingly enough, Gideon actually isn't the first judge that we find in the Bible. In the book of Judges, we're given a bunch of different judges. But the ones that come before Gideon is we have Othniel, we have Ehud, we have Shamgar, and we have Barak. So there's many different judges, and Gideon is just one uh, judge in the book of Judges. But we're, gonna, we're not going to look at those other judges these next couple weeks, but we're going to focus in on Gideon. All right, so that's what a judge is, okay? They're a military leader who leads an army into battle to save uh, Israel from their enemies. But maybe a harder question is, why a judge? Or why does Israel need a judge? Why do they need to be saved? Okay, and that's, what, that's how we're going to kind of lead into our story and specifically look, start looking at chapter 6. So um, the book of Judges, if you've never read the book of Judges or have heard about the book of Judges, it's actually probably one of my favorite books to study. I really enjoy reading it. It has a lot of different interesting stories. But at the same time, the book of Judges is a book about Israel's sin. And, and what, that, what I mean by sin is, I mean, it's about Israel's disobedience. It's about them worshiping other things other than the one true and only God. Okay, they didn't want to live how God wanted them to live. And that's really what the book of Judges is filled with. And we see this in Gideon's story as well. And, and 
Look with me at Judges chapter 6, verse 1, as we seek to answer this question, why is a judge needed? Or why is Gideon needed? And Judges chapter 6, verse 1 helps us to start answering this question. It says in verse 1, the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And what that means when it says they did evil in the sight of the Lord is they, it means that they disobeyed God. Okay, And, and because uh, they disobeyed God, we're told in verses 2 through 5 that actually God gave them over to their enemies. Okay, He handed them over to their enemies and he let their enemies take over the land. And specifically, and you want to remember this name, uh, specifically the name of their enemies was the Midianites. Okay, Say that with me. The Midianites. Okay, and try and remember that uh, name because that's going to be important in the weeks to come as we think about Israel's enemies. And that's who ultimately uh, Gideon is going to be called to save. But the Midianites, to explain, to describe who they are, in verses 2 through 5, we are told that they have a huge army. Their army is so big that they actually couldn't be counted. They were so big. And what this army would do is they would come into, they would march into the land of Israel, and they would actually steal Israel's food. They would steal their crops out in the field. They would steal their sheep. They would steal their donkey. They would totally destroy the land. Okay, and actually the book of, the author of the book of Judges uh, compares uh, the Midianites to locusts. And why he does that is because locusts uh, gather in groups or they travel in groups of hundreds and thousands and, and even millions. And they go in and they totally uh, destroy a farmer's crops and they eat up all those crops, just like the Midians do. And here's a picture of a locust. A locust is a bug. Uh, and this is what a locust looks like. And the picture might look a little hazy, and that's because uh, those small things on the picture are locusts. And that's what the Midianites are compared uh, to, because they were so, they had so many people in their army, but also because they destroyed the land of Israel. All right, and, and what we find is that because of the Midianites, the Israelites were forced to hide in caves. They actually had to live with their families and sleep in caves. Can you imagine maybe one night your parents say, hey, we have to go find protection and you go live in a cave? Okay, that would be really scary and, and probably really uncomfortable too, uh, to go live in a cave for protection. But what we find is, is because of the Midianites, Israel cries out to God. They say, God, we need your help. And remember, God is the one that they disobeyed. God is the one that they didn't want to follow after but yet they're crying out to him. So we might, we might wonder, what's God going to do? Is he actually going to help them? And that's where ju the judge comes in. That's where specifically in our story, Gideon comes in. God helps Israel by sending a judge, by giving Israel a military leader to fight against their enemies. So Gideon comes into scripture, or Gideon comes on to the scene in our story. And I don't know about you guys, but I remember um, uh, a little bit before I started really studying uh, Gideon, or what I used to think about Gideon is I used to think he was a brave hero for God. I used to think that Gideon was a, um, a great and courageous uh, military leader. But when you start reading Gideon's story, you find the complete opposite. This guy is not a brave guy. And we see this actually right from the start of Gideon's uh, story. But before we do that, uh, what I want to say is that what we're going to see in the story tonight about Gideon is we see God calling Gideon to lead his people. Specifically, God calls him to be a judge. And what we find is Gideon responds to God with what I would say is an, a response or a, an answer of fear and doubt. Okay? An answer of fear He's scared and an answer of doubt, meaning that he doesn't believe God. Okay, he's not trusting in God in this time. All right, so look with me at Judges chapter 6, verse 11, and, and we see where Gideon first comes uh, into the Bible. And we see right from the start of his story, he's scared. He's fearful, as I said. It says in verse 11, look with me there. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth of Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Berezite, while his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. 
So what we see here is we see that Gideon is hiding. Okay, he's, he's hiding his food, he's hiding himself, he's trying to get protection from the Midianites. Gideon is scared. All right, and what we see also in verse 11 is we see an angel comes to him. And this angel says to him, specifically in verse 12, if you look there, it says, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you. All right, so he's saying, Gideon, God is with you right now. He's present with you. He's willing to help you, and he's at work. And then he says, O mighty man of valor. So he calls, um, he calls Gideon a, a powerful man. He calls him a, a significant, a special man. All right, and, and what we get is we get Gideon's response, okay? And as I said, Gideon responds to this angel with both fear and doubt, okay? With fear and doubt, I don't know about you guys, but think about if an angel showed up to your house or showed up maybe in your backyard while you were playing out there, what would your response be to him? Okay, how would you respond to an angel? Well, we see Gideon's response. In Gideon's response, we see he answers or he, he responds with three things. Okay, uh, the first time Gideon uh, responds to the angel, he responds to this, that God is with him and he's a mighty man of valor. He says, how can God be at work in the world if all of this is going on? If the Midians are, if, we're, if we have to be scared of the Midianites and they're coming into our land and stealing our things, how is God with us? How is God at work? So he really questions God. It's really a response of doubt. He doesn't trust that God is with them in, in trying to help them. And we see the angel, he responds and he says that God is sending him, that God is sending him to do uh, what he's about to call him. To do so we might think is Gideon gonna go is he gonna is he gonna go because he is sent by this angel well we find out in his second response okay and in verse 15 we see that Gideon again responds with fear and doubt okay as we see that Gideon he says my family is not is not special it's nothing special and he also says I'm the youngest of my brothers and sisters and he questions how is God going to save Israel through me. And it might seem like Gideon's doubting himself. It seems like maybe that he's looking down on himself, but really he's doubting God here. He's, he's really saying, I don't trust God to use me. I don't think God can use me. And we see uh, the angel responds and, and the angel reminds him what he's already said. And he says, God is with you. He reminds him that God is present with him. Then we get the third response of Gideon. And again, we might wonder, is Gideon going to finally go? Is he going to go to save Israel um, with God's help? Well, we see Gideon, Gideon does not. He again has a response of fear and doubt. And we see this response is ultimately he wants a sign. He says to the angel, I need a sign. And what that means is he wants the angel to prove that God is actually sending him. Okay, and ultimately we see this sign uh, comes in the form that Gideon says to the angel, um, I want to give you a gift. I want to give you a present. So Gideon goes and makes him a meal and he sets it before the angel and he places it on a rock. Okay, and, and we get the sign where the angel proves that he's from God and that God is with Gideon because the, the, the angel reaches out and he puts out his staff and he touches the meal and all of a sudden the meal disappears. It goes up in, in fire. And with the meal disappearing in fire, the angel disappears as well. And from this, Gideon realizes and he, uh, he recognizes that God is sending him, that God is with him, and he worships God. So from this story, I don't know about you guys, but I'm standing here thinking, man, Gideon, it took you long enough to realize that God was sending you. It took you, real, it took you long enough to trust in God and, and really... Um, it's hard to believe that it took Gideon so long. And we wonder, Gideon, why didn't you just go? Okay, and, um, but what we ultimately see uh, from this story is we see that this is a story that God calls Gideon uh, to be a judge, to save Israel. And we ultimately see that God is willing to use Gideon, even though he was fearful, even though he was scared, and even though he doubted, even though he didn't trust in God completely. So as I said in the beginning, in these, in these uh, lessons, we're going to be doing three things. We're going to review, we're going to learn, which we just did. We learned a new story, and then we're going to think. We're going to think about what does this have to do with God? 
What does this have to do about my relationship with God? And what I want to give you guys in this section is I want to give you just two lessons that can be learned from this story. The first is this. God is with you. Remember, the angel said to Gideon twice, he, he told him right in the beginning, he said, God is with you. And then again, to one of Gideon's fearful and, and doubting responses, he, he reminds him, God is with you. And, and I want to tell you guys, if you believe in God, if you believe in Jesus Christ, God is with you too. God is always with you. And, and you might say to me, Pastor Cruz, how can God always be with me? I don't see him, okay? How can God be with me right now when he's not in, my, in the living room with me or where I am right now? And what I would say to you is, yeah, God is invisible, okay? He is with me right now even though I don't see him. And how we know that is because the Bible says so. Just like the angel told Gideon that God was with him, the Bible tells us that God is with us as his people. And the second lesson I want you to learn is just like Gideon was fearful and he doubted, we are too. Okay, it's easy, it's easy to think, Gideon, how could you be so scared? But if you think about your life, we often get scared just like Gideon. Even right now, if you think about your life with the coronavirus, you might be really scared if maybe one of your family members has the virus. You might just be having a hard time trusting God because of maybe school or church being canceled. Um, we often are just as fearful and just as doubting a God as Gideon was. So what I want to leave you with tonight from this story, as we think about God being with us and us fearing and doubting, just like Gideon, I want to encourage you guys to pray to God, to ask him for his help, to just talk with God when you are feeling uh, fearful, when you're scared uh, in this time. I want to encourage you that God is with you always. He can hear you at all times, and you can just talk to him no matter where you are. If you're out in the backyard or if you're laying in your bed, okay, you can talk to him every single minute. You can talk to him any time during the day, and he is with you, so he hears. So uh, that is our lesson for this evening. And again, I, I'm really glad you guys were able to join me tonight. And I hope you'll join me next Sunday and the next Sunday to come as we're going to learn some new stories about Gideon. And specifically next week, we're going to see that God gives Gideon a mission. Okay, he gives him a mission. It's, it's a pretty interesting mission and, and uh, it has a lot of risks. And we see Gideon's response, sadly, again, is one of fear. So we're going to see how this goes down and see what takes place in Gideon's life next week. So hope you guys have a good week and we'll see you next week.